Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We have David writing in on the email. He says, hello, sir. I enjoy your photo channel, especially nice to see another Rush fan. Well, back at you. Nice to have a Rush fan writing in. Um, and I'm still hoping for a reunion tour at some point in the near future. Uh, I subscribed quickly when I saw you wearing a concert shirt on one of your reviews. I grew up with these guys and it's just not the same without them. <laughs> and again, uh, I echo your thoughts exactly. I miss them. Love those guys couple of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. Uh, and um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> before we get too sentimental about Rush, uh, hoping you can settle a personal debate. I shoot with a Nikon D850 and a D500 and contemplating either the latest versions of the 24 to 120 or the 24, uh, 28 to 300. I'm looking for a good used walking around lens and a go-to lens. I shoot my kids' indoor sports, music, concerts. Both lenses are priced comparatively, used. Uh, appear to have the same guts except range. What is your recommendation? Thanks for your channel, Dave from Washington. Well, thanks, Dave. Appreciate the question. Um, and a good question. Bit of a tough question for me simply because um, I may be a little biased on the 24 to 120. However, it doesn't overshadow the 28 to 300 in the sense that I really like the idea of the 28 to 300 as such a wide range walk around lens and I know a lot of people are favoring that I think that's one of Scott Kelby's favorite walk around lenses now um, so uh, it's a tough question the 24 to 120 is probably a little bit better optically it's obviously a constant aperture f4 whereas the 28 to 300 is a variable aperture lens to give you some idea of what you're looking at for comparative sharpness, comparative overall lens testing. If we take a quick look here at DxO Mark, you can see that when we pull up the 24 to 120, and we'll pull it up on the Nikon D810 here because I don't think they have it reviewed on the 850 yet, but so on a high megapixel body, you're getting an overall score of 24. Note that the sharpness there score is a 15. If we switch over to the 28 to 300 on the D810, we got an overall score of 18, and we've only got an 11 on the sharpness score. So just based on DxOMark's testing of sharpness, you're a significant number. I mean, 11 versus 15. Um, however, I still wouldn't, that wouldn't be enough for me to rule out the 28 to 300. If you're really wanting an all-round lens, a true walk-around lens, the 28 to 300 is giving you way more reach and still quite wide on full frame at 28. Um, so this is really a tough call. Um, and it's what it's, I guess, going to come down to is um, what your shooting requirements are. You know, you're wanting it for... Um, Good used walk-around lens. I shoot my kids' indoor sports and music concerts. The 24-120 f4, it's going to give you the f4 constant aperture and a little sharper. Uh, so for concerts and indoors, it's, that's better. However, both concerts and indoor sports, the additional reach may be of more value at times. Granted, at 300, you're at f5.6, and it's not quite as sharp, but if it's a question of getting the shot or not getting the shot because you have 300, this is where you got to weigh it. Um, is that additional reach, that, that much longer zoom range, 28 to 300, with a slower aperture and a little less sharp image quality of more advantage to you than a reduced, well, practically like half the range. It is a little wider on the wide end, but it's not quite uh, even even a half of the 300 at 120. But it's f4, so it is a little faster, and it is um, a little wider and a little sharper. So what do we do here? Uh, you've you've kind of got to make that decision. The 24 to 120 f4 VR is one of my favorite lenses. If I was shooting events like weddings or corporate functions or things like that, I would use the 24 to 120. The additional sharpness, the additional speed would be an advantage to me over the 28 to 300. That said, the 28 to 300 for a lot of people is going to be a better walk around lens. So it just becomes what your comfort level is. Those are your deciding factors. The additional zoom range is really the only additional thing going for the 28 to 300 when we consider the price is the same. The less range, but the fact that it's a little wider, a little sharper, and faster are all three things going for the 24 to 120. And that's where you've got to decide. Let's throw it back to our viewers because you guys often will throw in some input or some thoughts that maybe I'd missed or hadn't thought of that help our viewers when they're, they're thinking of a purchase decision like this to decide. What would you guys do? 
24 to 120 or 28 to 300? Let us know which way you guys would go and why. If there's something I've missed on one of these lenses that you want to point out, feel free to leave that down below in the comments too. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about David's um, conundrum here or his decision to make. Um, leave it in the comments below and uh, really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks for your question, David. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.